After a disastrous season for the Toronto Raptors, things are just getting worse for Jalen McDaniels after this latest move. Let's get into it. Welcome back, everybody, to MHR Sports, the YouTube channel completely dedicated to Toronto Raptors content. Today, we're discussing Jalen McDaniels on the move once again after the Raptors traded him to the Sacramento Kings. He went through all of media day, got a bunch of photos taken, played a little bit in preseason as well, but then he was traded to the San Antonio Spurs, where subsequently he is going to be waived and become a free agent. It's a bit of a downward spiral for the player. Just a couple of seasons ago, starting the year with the Charlotte Hornets, where he was honestly decent, ended up getting traded at the deadline to the Philadelphia 76ers in a move that I thought was pretty good for the Sixers. And McDaniels himself was fine. He was fine. Like, you know, he's not a guy that's going to be getting playoff rotation minutes, but Definitely was fine for the 76ers. And off of the strength of that stint with the Sixers, the Toronto Raptors at the start of last season used their biannual exception for the player, giving him a two-year contract worth $4.5 million per season. Now, as far as my thoughts on McDaniels at the time, did not like the signing for the Raptors. He was decent for the Sixers, but ultimately I felt as though that money could have been better allocated elsewhere. However, I could not have foreseen just how bad it was going to be for the player in Toronto. Now, here's my beef with McDaniels. This is why I really don't like him as a player. As an NBA player, like, obviously, these guys are making millions and millions of dollars. Even, like, a player who's making, like, a lower-tier salary in the NBA, like McDaniels, $4.5 million a season. $4.5 million a season, that is a ton of money. Now, there are certain things as a basketball player you sometimes can't control. Obviously, everybody wants to play their best. Sometimes you just don't. Sometimes you struggle. Sometimes you're not playing great stuff. That's acceptable. What is unacceptable for a player is not trying. Because that is something that is completely always in your control. You can always put in effort. And for so many games, which McDaniels featured for the Raptors last season, not only was he just atrocious at basketball, he also clearly was half-assing everything. There, I remember there was like... a. a a garbage time that lasted 10 minutes for the Raptors at the end of a fourth quarter. And he turned the ball over like four times in 10 minutes and was just, just diabolical on the court. It was a dead contract. It was a completely dead asset going to the season. The contract worth four and a half million dollars. But by some miracle, the Raptors managed to trade him for some pretty nice assets. Honestly, the Raptors traded Jalen McDaniels to the Sacramento Kings for David Mitchell, the 45th overall pick in the NBA draft, which eventually became Jamal Shedd, a Portland Trailblazers second round pick for 2025. That's going to be a really good second round pick, but also the Raptors to take on the $6 million contract of Sasha Vazenkov, who wanted out of the NBA to return to Europe. But in the end, the Raptors bought out Sasha Vazenkov for $0. So the Raptors got David Mitchell, Jamal Shedd, the 45th overall pick, and a Portland second round pick for 2025 for a player who honestly the Raptors probably would have considered buying out going into this season. A completely dead and useless asset in Jalen McDaniels. Since then, this is where it gets a bit strange. The Sacramento Kings have attached a second round pick onto Jalen McDaniels to trade him to the San Antonio Spurs, where he's going to be waived. Bit of a strange one. The Kings traded... Mitchell, the 45th pick, a second round pick from Portland, just to get off the Vizenkov contract when he got bought out for $0 anyways, to get a player who they had to package a second round pick to get off of just for another team to waive him. A strange situation. We'll cover that a little bit more later on and why the Kings did exactly what they did. But before that, the Jalen McDaniel situation for the player himself, look, it's a sad reality, but ultimately, like, it's, it's tough for me to find sympathy for a player who just seriously did not try for the Raptors, like just did not put in nearly enough effort. It's tough for me to find sympathy for that. He's clearly a player that has talent, like he can play decent defense, he can shoot the ball a little bit, put none of that on display for the Raptors, absolutely. Therefore, you know, I can see why nobody wanted him. Like even Sacramento Kings fans are wondering, why is this guy still on our team when they got him? Because clearly what the Sacramento Kings had in mind with this move 
is just getting off of that Sasha Vizenkov contract. Look, the situation was, it was the day of the second round of the NBA draft. The Sacramento Kings probably had some things in the works regarding DeMar DeRozan. The Kings are a team that's operating, you know, tightly around the cap here and needed to free up that space. Sasha Vizenkov in that situation had quite a bit of leverage, even for a buyout. Now, honestly, when the Raptors bought out Sasha Vizenkov for zero dollars, it was a pretty unprecedented move by a player who was trying to get out of his contract and go back to Europe. Typically, the leverage that the player has is that they can retire. They can retire, take a year off from basketball, the contract runs out, and then they can go back to Europe no problem. The Raptors or whoever is the team that has the player on contract would still have that amount, in this case being $6 million counting towards the cap. Therefore, typically, you know, they're not going to get bought out for the full amount, but they do get bought out for 2 to $3 million. That was my expectation for the situation. But evidently, Vizenkov wanted it out so bad and wanted to get it done so quickly that the Raptors got off of the contract for free. But if he had stayed at the Kings, perhaps with the knowing that they were looking at DeMar DeRozan, they needed to free up cap space, perhaps he could have been a little bit more stubborn with the buyout and gotten something out of the Kings. But what we get of this whole situation, the Kings basically gave away David Mitchell, the 45th pick, an early second round pick from the Portland Trailblazers, and another second round pick just so they could sign DeMar DeRozan. Now, we love DeMar as Raptors fans, but DeMar is not the player he used to be, especially on defense. He's still a great player, don't get me wrong, but defensively, taking some strides back that already wasn't very good. He's not getting any younger. It's a peculiar situation for sure from the Sacramento Kings. But from a Raptors perspective, look, there has not been many great moves that have been pulled off by this Raptors front office in the last few years. A lot of good assets have left the team completely for nothing. A lot of poor trades have been executed. But the shining lights of the last few years, certainly the OG trade to the Knicks where the Raptors got back the 31st overall pick, R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel quickly, but another shining light. Like, seriously, the Raptors, honestly, were probably pretty strongly considering buying out Jalen McDaniels, or if not, just eating that contract for a year and saying, oh, well, a wasted roster spot, but it is what it is. We got to keep him for $4.5 million for one more year. They took a completely dead contract, dead asset, and turned it into David Mitchell, who's looked decent in preseason, who was going to be their backup point guard, a position they desperately needed to fill. <laughs> they got the 45th pick in Jamal Shedd, who is looking pretty good in preseason, and we'll see if he can carve out a role this year. And a very early second-round pick from the Portland Trailblazers. A complete miracle, a complete masterstroke by the front office. I, I, it didn't make sense at the time, and the trade just only seemed to get better and better and better for the Raptors. And looking at how the situation has now transpired with Jalen McDaniels, a free agent looking for a new team, it's just a complete miracle move by the Raptors front office. So huge props to them for executing that. We'll see if this move pays off for the Sacramento Kings, but I'm not as concerned about that. I'm concerned about the Raptors side of things. And again, this trade just keeps getting better. Things just keep getting worse, unfortunately, for Jalen McDaniels. It is what it is. So what do you make of the Raptors and their move to move off of Jalen McDaniels and bring in these assets? Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on the trade with this newfound information in the comments down below. That is all for me for today. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to MHR Sports for more and more Raptors content and videos and live streams. And I will see you again next time for another piece of content, whatever it may be.